For the past 13 years, many of our nation's dairy cows have been injected with a synthetic growth hormone. That hormone, recombinant bovine growth hormone, makes the cows produce more milk, but it's also getting into our milk and into our bloodstreams. A growing number of scientists, consumers, and physicians are becoming alarmed about the effects on our health. Our guest today is one of those physicians. Dr. Jenny Pompilio is with the Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility. Doctor, welcome. Thank you. Let's talk about what this growth hormone actually is and how did it end up in our milk? Recombinant bovine growth hormone, also known as RBGH, is produced by the Monsanto Corporation and it is an injection that the cows receive in their buttocks to increase uh -huh. milk production. It's also known as RBST. What are the concerns you have with it? Uh, we, we referred to health concerns, but what are the concerns? There are many health concerns with this artificial growth hormone. It's this artificial. Is, this is actually the package insert. So when a dairy farmer buys RBGH, this is what they receive. And on the back are listed all the different medical conditions that can be associated in the cows. In the cow? Yes. So it can increase 16 different medical conditions in cows. Anything from birth disorders to lameness and hoof problems in the cows. It can also cross, cause increased pus in the milk. Oh, mm -hmm. that's appetizing. And, <laughs> and it can also uh, lead to a painful condition of the udder called mastitis, which is very important for other reasons, which we'll talk about. That would be infection. And, right, an infection of the So udder. how do they treat that with antibiotics? Yes, exactly. And that's another very important concern with RBGH. Because of the increased link to mastitis, they lead to increased antibiotic use. Many of these antibiotics are the same that we use in, in humans. So different, mm. most bacteria are killed, but some of them can develop resistance and then come into the food supply through the milk and that can lead to increased resistance in humans. That's a concern you probably have as a, a physician if you're trying to treat infections in patients. Yes, it's, it's definitely a major public health concern in this country. There's a concern about increased cancer rates. There's a hormone, insulin-like growth factor one, which is present and identical in both cows and humans. RBGH increases the IGF-1 in cow's milk, and this is not disputed. It's also not disputed that elevated levels of IGF-1 can promote cancer in humans, specifically cancers such as breast, prostate, and colorectal cancer. What is in dispute, as this arrow shows in the middle of the slide, is whether or not IGF-1 can survive digestion. Now, when the FDA approved the drug in 1993, it did so on the assumption that IGF-1 would not survive digestion in humans. However, multiple studies since then have shown that casein, which is the main milk protein, can protect IGF-1, and it can then enter the bloodstream. There's not 100% proof that there is a direct link between RBGH and increased IGF-1 in humans and cancer risks, but we at Oregon PSR believe in the science, and there is enough scientific data that points to a concern for increased cancer mm. rates in humans. So we would like to be safe and rather than sorry. But is there enough of it in the bloodstream to be dangerous? That's a great question. The FDA and Monsanto actually say that the human body produces much more IGF-1 naturally than you'll ever receive through dietary intake. And this is a valid point. However, they're not emphasizing the fact that this is a hormone and even minute fluctuations in hormones can be very important in growth and development. So this is especially concerning for children. So with all these concerns, is there anything that this hormone does to improve the nutrition or anything in the milk? There's no evidence that RBGH significantly affects nutrition or taste for the consumer.